Now that we have the basic outlines of a few of the pieces of our system, we're going to create our first real action. And this action is going to allow an agent to patrol around a set of waypoints. So we're going to create a new C -sharp script, which we're going to call patrol action. And open it for editing. And so patrol action is going to inherit from action, right? And remember, action is a scriptable object. So we're going to use the create asset menu attribute, pass in the menu name, which is going to be pluggable AI actions patrol. And so we are going to create an asset out of this from our create menu once it's done. And so we can delete start and update. And so in order for our action to be able to act, it needs to implement the act function overriding the base class. So we are going to add a public override void act, which takes a state controller as a parameter and returns void. So in this case, the action that's going to be taken each update is going to be called patrol, which is also going to take a state controller parameter. And so we're going to add a private void patrol, which takes a state controller, also called controller. The first thing we want our patrol action to do is to check the next waypoint it's headed towards and walk towards it. And so because this involves the scene data, right, this involves our individual agent, we're going to want to add a few variables to our state controller script, to our mono behavior, um, which is going to be attached to our tank. So let's go back to state controller. We'll go up to the top. And we are going to add, actually, we're going to add it down here because it's going to be hidden. We're going to add a hidden public int called next waypoint. Right, and we're just hiding it in the inspector so that people don't get confused and think it's one of the values they need to set up. Uh, but we do want it to be public because we want to set it from outside the class. So we've already added the waypoint list. You can see it here. And that is, that's going to receive the waypoints from the game manager. We've already got our nav mesh agent variable and we're getting a reference to it in a wake, right? And so the nav mesh agent is what is going to be moving our agents. Navigation is a feature which is built into Unity and allows us to build a map of the walkable area in our scene. And the nav mesh for our level has already been generated and the nav mesh agent component needed for our tanks to travel on it has already been added. Um, and if you're interested in navigation in general, you can go check that out in the documentation. So back in patrol action, we want to start our agent moving toward their next waypoint. So we're going to say controller dot nav mesh agent dot destination equals controller dot waypoint list. And then we're going to pass in controller dot next waypoint. And what we want from that waypoint is the position. So that we're going to set the destination for our nav mesh agent to, in this case, the zeroth uh, position in our list of waypoints. Now we want to start our agent walking towards it. So we're going to call controller.navmeshagent.resume to start it walking or rolling since it's a tank. Next, we want to check if we've reached our destination and therefore need to pick a new waypoint, right? So first, we're going to check if the distance remaining to travel is greater than our agent's stopping distance, which has already been set up in the inspector. And then we'll check if they still have a path pending that they want to travel. So this is going to be a longish line. So this is going to be if controller.navmeshagent.remaining distance is less than or equal to controller.navmeshagent.stopping distance and not controller.navmeshagent.path pending. So path pending is a bool that allows us to check is a path in the process of being computed but not yet ready, right? So is our agent trying to figure out where they're going? If so, right, we 
they probably haven't arrived yet. So if both of those things are true, we have arrived at our destination. And so then we want to focus our agent on the next waypoint by adding one to the next waypoint variable on our controller and using the modulo operator on our count of our list of waypoints. And so this is a way to make sure we don't exceed the length of our waypoint list and so to loop back to the first waypoint in the list if we go over. So we're going to say controller dot next waypoint equals controller dot next waypoint plus one. So we're going to add one to the waypoint and then we're going to use the modulo operator and pass in controller dot waypoint list dot count. Right. So this is just a way to make sure that we don't exceed the length of our list. And if we do, we go back to the beginning. OK, patrol controller, right? So we're going to pass in the controller. We're going to call the patrol function each update. Let's just make sure that all of these, this is calling do actions and this is calling update state. Okay, that should be good. And return to Unity. And so in order to use our patrol action, we need to create an asset of it. So I'm actually in our scriptable object folder. I'm going to create a new folder called actions. And then I'm going to go to create. Notice we now have this pluggable AI menu and we are going to create a new state. And this is going to be called patrol chaser, right? So this is the patrol state for the chaser AI type. Now, the actions for patrol chaser are empty right? But we've made one action, so we can add it. So I'm going to set the size to one. And then I'm going to click on the circle select. Oh, and then there are no assets yet, right? Of the type action, because I haven't created. Uh, what did I do? I created a state, not an action. Hold on, we need to add a folder for our states. And put our state in there. And so what we're going to do is we are going to now Right click, create, pluggable AI. Now we have an actions submenu and create a patrol action asset. And we're gonna call this patrol action. Now, when we go back to our patrol chaser state and we can see it'll show us only scriptable objects of the type action, because that's what it's looking for. And we will add the patrol action and we'll set the color to a lovely green. I didn't assign the state, right? We need to always assign our initial state to our prefab. So here's our prefab, our AI tank prefab. We now have a, an empty field for the current state. We need to assign it. So we've got our starting state assigned in the inspector. And now when we test, you can see the gizmo is being drawn and he is gonna start patrolling, right? So right now, it's not so much a state machine as just one action that he is just going to loop around on, um, but it's a start, right? So there we go. So now let me just take a moment, take some questions, and then we will continue with adding our first decision to our system, which is gonna be looking. Jay Acklick asks, why call patrol from act instead of just putting the patrol code in the act function? You totally could. Uh, I'm trying to keep all these scripts kind of structured the same so that we have sort of act and then our verb as a separate function. But you could just stick it all in act if you wanted to. For me, it's a little clearer to be able to just read, oh, this is patrolling. But it's up to you.